Hey guys, it's Aaron. So we're gonna take a look at some more layout. This time I wanna take a look at some more dimensioning stuff. We just talked about dimensioning, but uh, there's always more. So the two things that I was asked about was diving into the rotational, uh, the, the round dimension, you know, the dimensioning and angle. So we're gonna take a look at doing that. It's really pretty simple once you've seen how it's done. The other thing to look at is something called running dimensions, where a series of dimensions are all pulled from the same point and how to set those up. So we're gonna take a look at doing both those things right now. All right, let's start, let's start simple. Let's go up here to dimensions and change from our linear to our angular dimension. So one thing I'm gonna do before I start drawing is I do wanna verify that grid snap is turned off. Grid snap can make it difficult to do angular dimensions. You'll see what I'm talking about in just one second. All right, so I wanna put two dimensions on. Um, I want to say how far it is from the flat, so from straight across where there's nothing here, down to here. And then maybe over here we'll say how far from this vertical up to where this is. So a couple different ways of putting dimensions on here. So the way that dimensions work is I'm gonna start by picking the point that is the easiest on this dimension is gonna be this top point. And now I'm gonna pick the first line that my angle is gonna dimension about. So I'm gonna just come anywhere down this line and click. Then I'm gonna go back and establish a second line. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna show you the angle between the two lines. So I'm gonna establish my second line, same start point, and just pull it down the top of this wall. And there I go, that's all there is to it. That gives me this. I do have, you just saw there, it did flicker. I can go on either side. It doesn't assume which, which dimension you want, but you can drag it out to either side. So this one was supposed to be the inside like this. Now my second one is, I wanted to say how far is this angle off of 90 degrees to the wall? So what I'm gonna do is I don't have to, this on this one, I dimensioned off of a line and a line. I don't have to do that though. because so I can click here and I can just drag until it snaps on the red axis and that's my first line. Then I can click here, drag down here, and then same thing, I'm pulling out that dimension and again, I can flip it to the other side. So there we go, super simple. I know a lot of people struggle with that because it's, they, you kinda wanna draw it like you would draw an arc, right? I wanna go click, 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 and just have it draw that. But what it's asking for is for you to establish two lines and we'll show you both possible angles off of those two lines. So like I said, once you've seen it done, it's pretty easy to get in the hang of doing that. It's, it's a great tool for putting in dimensions like this. What I've learned is you do have to be careful to make sure you're dimensioning the right information. So, uh, you know, like a, an end cut on a stud like this is actually probably something you want to measure off 90 degrees and not the actual cut because that's not how a saw is going to dimension. Anyhow, let's talk about running dimensions. So like I said, running dimensions are used in things like walls or floors where from one location, I could just run my tape measure and say, place a stud here, place a stud here, place a stud here, place a stud here. I can just real quickly do that. Um, there is not a tool to automatically do running dimensions in layout, but fortunately it's pretty easy to create. So I'm gonna create it just, I'm gonna take normal dimensions and then convert them into running dimensions. And then we'll go back from there and set it up to kind of not automatically, but quicker draw those dimensions. All right, so I'm gonna start by just doing normal dimension. I'm gonna start from one end, and I'm gonna dimension to the near side of these studs right here, and I'm just gonna pull that down. The next dimension is not gonna just come here, and I can't use my double click trick because my double click trick takes the end of my last dimension as a start point of my next dimension. Instead, I'm gonna come back to the first point again, and I'm gonna to come to this point, and I'm gonna drop that down so it lines up with the first one. I know they're overlapping. Don't worry, it's cool. We're in school, we're learning. We're allowed to make mistakes. Next one's gonna come down to the face of the next stud. Drop that down. And then maybe I'll just do one more to the face of this pack of studs right here, like that. Okay, so obviously this is no good. I couldn't take this out and give this to somebody they wouldn't be able to use it. So we're gonna do a little bit of cleanup here. First thing I'm gonna do is clean up my hatch. So normally, hatch mark like this indicates that this is a dimension from here to here. But what we have is a dimension starting here and going progressively to this point, then to this point, then to this point, then to this point. So we're going to change the dimensions by using the dimension style screen. I'm going to come in here. No, I'm sorry. We're not going to use dimension style. We're going to actually use shape style. 
I'm going to come here, my start arrow, rather than using a slash, I'm going to use the circle right here. And because I had all of them selected at once, it changed all of them. So that's actually just four different dots on top of each other, but you see I have one dot. And now for my end arrow, I'm just going to pick a solid black arrow. So there we go. Now I have representation showing uh, dimension from here to here to here to here to here. Okay, so I'm getting close. Now I just got to clean up these actual dimensions. So I found the easiest way to do this is to pick the text right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that text this way. I have to do that by double clicking. And then I can just grab it and move it this way. And I'm just going to put it in the middle there. It does drop a leader line back. We'll take care of that in just a second. Don't you stress. We'll just get that in the middle. Same thing here. I'm going to double click, grab that text, slide it over, put it where it's supposed to be right here. Next one, again, click, double click, drag it right over. Uh, and it, it gets a little bit more difficult with these ones that are small because it's trying to snap it back to where it was. So you might have to zoom in to get, uh, get it exactly where you want it. This one looks good. I'll just leave that as it is. So now I'm getting there. I'm almost there. Problem, of course, is my leader lines. So I can grab all of this like this. Now I will come up to leader or to dimension style, change my leader style from curved to no leader. And there we go. Now I got a nice set of dimensions there. So how much of that could I do beforehand rather than editing? Let's Let's just delete, let's destroy everything we just did and come in here and draw some fresh dimensions. Now, as soon as I click dimensions, it's going to go back to my default. So before I start drawing, I can come in here and I can tell my end arrow should be a circle. My forward arrow should be that. I can say no leader and then I can come here and click here to here. Hmm, something's not right there, huh? So let's undo undo and let's swap that start arrow <laughs> end arrow it's literally in the name that was a faux pas that was not a teaching opportunity that was Aaron clicking things and not paying attention so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna line them up like this so you will notice right now right off the bat I do still have my dimensions piling up on top of each other. So what I will have to still do is come in here, double click, drag my dimensions to where they're supposed to be. But you can see that that's really, I mean, compared to, whoops, whoa, oh, whoa, get, get way in there. Uh, compared to what I had to do last time, it's actually, you know, probably something I should, whoops, probably something I should be doing anyhow is double checking my dimensions before I release this plan in the wild. So maybe that's an opportunity to do that. Yeah, let's call it that. So there you go. It is pretty quick and easy to create running dimensions. Um, and it is super easy to put on angle dimensions. So hopefully you like that. Um, I, at this point, I can't think of anything else to look at in dimensions. We have, this is our third video just on dimensions. So I think we got it. I think we've done everything I can think to do in dimensions. If you think of something else, let me know. If you like this video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We do a lot of videos around here. You'll be notified of each and every one of them if you click subscribe. Most importantly though, like I was saying, leave a comment down below. If there's another dimensioning type that I didn't touch on, let me know that. If there's something else in layout that you run into that you want to know more about, let me know that too. Like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.